Welcome to the next project. Today I'm doing another uh, task that was not necessary. In fact, that's uh, most of my projects are unnecessary. But this one is a refretting of a guitar neck that goes in a kit modification project that I have going on. And there was nothing wrong with the frets that were in it. Uh, they'd already been uh, leveled and crowned and polished and made nice. But I wanted to change the binding that was on the neck to match the binding that's on the body. Uh, the cream colors were two different shades, very noticeable. So anyway, I had the option of pulling the binding and squaring the old frets and going for a Gibson nib or nub style, um, but I chose not to do that. I decided just to pull the frets, level the fretboard, and then pressed in new frets. Um, the frets that were in this neck were not glued in, um, so it was a very easy process, and I'll uh, show you how I go about doing things. Let's start the next project. I don't know if it's necessary, but quite often I will uh, adjust the neck so it has some back bow. My thinking is that this will open up the fret slots just a little bit and hopefully take some of the grip of the uh, fingerboard off of the tang, uh, hopefully resulting in less tear out. Again, I don't know if it really works. I've uh, removed frets that are just destructive and others come out really nice. Another thing I do that I'm not sure how much it helps, when I do use a soldering iron like this to uh, warm the fret, I actually tin the tip of the soldering iron uh, just a little bit to keep it fresh. I think it helps transfer heat just a little bit better. Again, maybe it doesn't help. And at this point, I've given up on adding heat to the frets. They're coming out very well, uh, very minimal tearing of the fingerboard. So uh, this is a great project at this point. I burnish all of the uh, fret slots down. I run over it with my fingernail first. Then I use the heel of uh, a screwdriver handle, followed by some thin CA to help uh, glue everything, any little micro tear out that there might be, help glue it all together, kind of petrify the wood in a way. I know it's not actually petrified, but it makes it really hard. And I think without adding glue to the frets later on, this helps hold things together very well. This neck and fingerboard are in very good shape in general and took just a little bit of sanding mainly to bring the level of the fingerboard and the binding into the same plane or same arc, um, but also just to verify that if there is a little wave to the fingerboard I can uh, level it out and get it ready for frets. I really encourage anyone who wants to work on this kind of thing to make some of your own tools. This is a fret wire bender. It cost me like $8 and maybe a couple hours of my time. Um, you can buy them. I think they start at like $80 and go up to about $150 or something. So, you know, build your own birdhouse.
Here I'm using a fret nipper and it takes the tang off of the, uh, the fret. And honestly, this is another tool that you could make for yourself. You can buy this nipper, I think they call it a case nibbler, uh, but you can buy it on Amazon for anywhere from $7 up to about $25, or you can buy the tool uh, pre-made for like $65. Here's another tool you can make. That little saw that I was using to clean out uh, the fret slots is an X-Acto um, hobby saw. You can buy it at like a hobby store where they sell uh, model airplanes and things of that nature. All you do is take and cut the blade back so there's about a half inch or so of the tooth end uh, uh, left and it fits right in the fret slots and cleans things out well. Typically when I press in frets, I have the fretboard cleaned up nice and smooth level and the frets go in beautifully, no need uh, for any special attention. Some people suggest that you cut a slight V in the fret slot to help the frets press in. I've never had a problem with frets going in anyway, and my concern with this is it leaves a very slight void, which you could be argued that uh, will help keep the fretboard from spitting the fret out over time. Uh, maybe the best thing to do is just make sure you have any tear out at the fretboard slot removed before the frets are pressed in. You don't need an arbor press to put frets in. In fact, I've installed a lot of frets just with a little hammer and a half inch dowel of wood. Um, if you're gonna do that, just start at one end uh, with the dowel and tap the frets down and work across the neck. Another thing I do, I used to use, and I still have it, um, it's about a three inch wide piece of wood uh, that I just place over the frets and uh, use it like the dowel, just gently drive the frets in. And those options work really well and to a great deal do the same thing as the Arbor Press. The Arbor Press is just very good at uh, pressing things in evenly. Uh, there's less damage potential to the frets and it keeps the radius. The brass part of that press can be changed to different radius depending on the neck radius you're working on. I quite often will take the time to tape off the neck, um, leaving the frets exposed, uh, mainly to protect both the fingerboard, um, the, the markers, um, just about anything that I don't want to accidentally damage. It's far easier to tape it off in you know, five minutes than it is to spend you know five minutes or an hour or two hours fixing whatever might get damaged. I had been asked why I use a blue marker on the frets, and uh, I guess the best way to explain it is it's used kind of as a guide, whether you're sanding to level the frets. Uh, as you'd sand across, you'd take off the high spot and the blue marker would be gone, you'd reveal the fret below. If I'm filing, um, I will file until just a sliver of the blue uh, marker is left at the crown of the fret. That way I know I have a fine uh, top point left.
I use a couple different ways to polish the frets. Here I'm using a Dremel style tool with a felt wool uh, little pad, uh, circular pad and mother's mag polish. And I also have uh, a larger buffing wheel that goes in a drill. Um, and I'll use it when I need to polish not only the frets but also the uh, fingerboard. The thing you need to be careful with that is if you have plastic inlays, like in this guitar, you don't want to burn the inlays. 